What have we learned about polynomials so far? We figured out that they're made up of terms, which consist of a number part or coefficient, and a variable raised to a positive whole number. We also learned that not all polynomials have many terms, and that those with less than four can be given specific names. A single term equals a monomial, two terms is a binomial, and if there are three terms, we call it a trinomial. Beyond that, we would simply refer to it as a polynomial. In this section, we'll be looking at identifying what the degree of a term is, and how we can use that to identify the degree of the polynomial itself. So what do we mean when we say degree? Degree can have many meanings. You certainly can earn a degree, feel a degree, or find a direction or angle of degree. Polynomials can also be described as having a degree. This relates to the exponent value of the variable part of the terms within the polynomial. Let's first look at some terms to clarify the idea of degree. In the example 2x to the third, we see that we have a variable raised to the third power. So we could say this is a third degree term. So what's the degree of the term negative y to the fifth? Given a power of 5, it is a 5th degree term. 4z is a 1st degree term. Remembering that anything raised to the first power is simply itself, so the 1 is implied. What about the degree of a constant like negative 3? This one's a bit of a stretch, but recall we have suggested with a constant that the variable part could be shown raised to a 0 power. This means it equals 1, and thus once again is not needed to be included. In a way, we could suggest it has a zeroth degree, but for simplicity, we just refer to it as a constant term. How do you think we should determine the degree of a term with more than one variable? Remembering from our exponent laws, when variables are being multiplied together, we can add their exponent values to quickly find the combined power. Of course, different variables cannot be simplified using this law, but in this case, it's just the degree we are looking for. Once again, try to determine the degree for each of the following terms. Negative 5x to the third, z to the second. By adding the exponents, we have a combined power of 5, which means this is a fifth degree term. x to the sixth, y to the third. Well, 6 plus 3 is 9, giving us a ninth degree term. 3x squared yz gives us 2 plus 1 plus 1, making this a fourth degree term. Finally, now that we're comfortable with identifying the degree for a term, we can apply our understanding to describe the degree of the polynomial itself. We simply use the highest degree term to describe the degree of the entire polynomial. Look at the following examples and try to identify both the degree and name of each polynomial. The highest degree term is found in the 4x to the third. And since the polynomial has three terms, we can now describe it as a third degree trinomial. The next example has a fourth degree term and two terms, making it a fourth degree binomial. The last example is a fifth degree polynomial. To summarize this section, we have learned terms can be described as having a degree based on the exponent value of their variable. When a term has more than one variable, each exponent value must be added together to know its degree. And the degree of the polynomial itself is determined by the term with the highest degree.